Welcome to Passion Travel. Join us as we explore fascinating destinations, uncover hidden gems, and embark on unforgettable journeys. Subscribe now and ignite your passion for travel. Torta del Casar, a creamy, spreadable cheese from the region, often enjoyed with bread. Large pot for heating milk. Thermometer. Cheese molds. Cheesecloth. Cullender. Cheese press, optional. Wooden spoon or ladle. Large bowl. Preparation. Milk preparation. Heat the raw sheep's milk in a large pot to approximately 30 degrees Celsius 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Stir gently to ensure even heating. Adding rennet. Dissolve the natural rennet in a small amount of water as per the instructions. Add the dissolved rennet to the warmed milk and stir gently for about a minute to mix thoroughly. Coagulation. Cover the pot and let the milk sit undisturbed for about 45 minutes to 1 hour, allowing the curds to form. The milk should set into a firm, gel-like consistency. Cutting the curds. Once the curd has set, use a long knife or a curd cutter to cut the curds into small cubes, about 1 cm or 0.5 inches. This helps to release the whey. Stirring and heating. Gently stir the curds for about 15 to 20 minutes, gradually increasing the temperature to around 35 degrees Celsius, 95 degrees Fahrenheit. This helps to firm up the curds. Draining the whey. Place a colander lined with cheesecloth over a large bowl and transfer the curds into the colander to drain the whey. Gather the edges of the cheesecloth and form a bundle, pressing gently to expel more whey. Salting and molding. Sprinkle salt over the curds and mix gently to distribute evenly. Transfer the salted curds into cheese molds. If you have a cheese press, you can press the curds lightly to expel more whey and help form the cheese. Aging. Remove the cheese from the molds and place them on a wooden board or mat. Let the cheese age in a cool, humid environment, around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius or 50 to 59 degrees Fahrenheit, for at least 60 days. Turn the cheese regularly to ensure even aging and prevent mold growth. Final product. After aging, Torta del Casar will have a creamy, almost liquid interior. The rind will be soft and slightly wrinkled. To serve, cut off the top of the cheese wheel and scoop out the creamy interior with a spoon or spread it on bread. Montaditos, small sandwiches filled with a variety of ingredients like cured meats, cheeses, and vegetables. Montaditos are small Spanish sandwiches that are typically served as tapas. They can be filled with a wide variety of ingredients, allowing for endless creativity. Here's a basic recipe for making a few popular types of montaditos. Ingredients Bread Baguette or small rolls Fillings, examples Montadito de jamón y queso Spanish cured ham, jamón ibérico or serrano Manchego cheese Olive oil Montadito de tortilla española Spanish omelette, tortilla española, slices Aioli or mayonnaise Montadito de chorizo y pimentos Chorizo slices. Roasted red peppers. Olive oil. Montadito de Aiton y pimentos. Tuna in olive oil. Roasted red peppers. Aioli or mayonnaise. Montadito de Ancoas y tomate. Anchovies. Fresh tomato slices. Olive oil. Garlic. Preparation. Prepare the bread. Slice the baguette or rolls into small pieces, about 2 to 3 inches each. Toast the bread slices lightly if desired. Prepare the fillings. For Montadito de Jamon y Queso, drizzle a bit of olive empanadas, pastry stuffed with meats, vegetables, or cheese. Empanadas are delicious pastries filled with a variety of ingredients, popular in many Spanish-speaking countries. Here's a basic recipe for making traditional empanadas with a savory meat filling. Ingredients Dough 3 cups all-purpose flour 1 half teaspoon salt Half a cup cold butter, cubed 1 egg Half a cup cold water 
1 tablespoon vinegar. Filling. 1 tablespoon olive oil. 1 medium onion, finely chopped. 2 garlic cloves, minced. 1 pound ground beef. 1 teaspoon paprika. 1 half teaspoon cumin. 1 half teaspoon oregano. Salt and pepper to taste. A quarter cup green olives, chopped. 2 hard boiled eggs, chopped. A quarter cup raisins, optional. For assembly. 1 egg, beaten, for egg wash. Preparation. Dough. Mix dry ingredients. In a large bowl, combine the flour and salt. Cut in butter. Add the cold, cubed butter to the flour mixture. Use a pastry cutter, or your fingers, to work the butter into the flour until the mixture resembles coarse crumbs. Add wet ingredients. In a small bowl, whisk together the egg, cold water, and vinegar. Pour this into the flour mixture and stir until the dough comes together. Knead and chill. Turn the dough out onto a floured surface and knead it a few times until smooth. Wrap the dough in plastic wrap and refrigerate for at least one hour. Filling. Cook onions and garlic. Heat the olive oil in a large skillet over medium heat. Add the chopped onion and cook until soft, about 5 minutes. Add the minced garlic and cook for another minute. Cook meat. Add the ground beef to the skillet and cook until browned. Drain any excess fat. Season. Stir in the paprika, cumin, oregano, salt, and pepper. Cook for another minute to combine the flavors. Add remaining ingredients. Remove the skillet from heat and stir in the chopped green olives, hard-boiled eggs, and raisins, if using. Let the filling cool to room temperature. Assembly Preheat oven Preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 190 degrees Celsius. Line a baking sheet with parchment paper. Roll out dough. On a floured surface, roll out the dough to about 1 8 inch thick. Use a round cutter, about 4 to 6 inches in diameter, to cut out circles of dough. Fill and fold. Place a tablespoon of the filling in the center of each dough circle. Fold the dough over to form a half moon shape. Press the edges together to seal, then crimp with a fork. Egg wash. Place the empanadas on the prepared baking sheet. Brush the tops with the beaten egg for a golden finish. Bake. Bake in the preheated oven for 20 to 25 minutes, or until golden brown. Serve. Let the empanadas cool slightly before serving. They can be enjoyed hot or at room temperature. Churros, fried dough pastries typically dusted with sugar and sometimes served with hot chocolate for dipping. Churros are a popular Spanish treat made from fried dough, often enjoyed with a cup of thick hot chocolate for dipping. Here's a simple recipe to make churros at home. Ingredients Dough 1 cup water 2 and a half tablespoons sugar 1 half teaspoon salt 2 tablespoons vegetable oil 1 cup all-purpose flour For frying Vegetable oil, for frying Coating Half a cup sugar 1 teaspoon ground cinnamon Optional Chocolate sauce or hot chocolate for dipping Preparation Dough Prepare ingredients Measure out all the ingredients. Have them ready to go, since the dough needs to be used immediately after it's made. Boil water. In a medium saucepan, combine the water, sugar, salt, and vegetable oil. Bring the mixture to a boil over medium heat. Add flour. Once the mixture reaches a boil, remove the saucepan from heat. Quickly stir in the flour until the mixture forms a ball. The dough should be smooth and free of lumps. Cool dough. Let the dough cool for a few minutes. Meanwhile, prepare your piping bag with a large star tip. Frying. Heat oil. Pour vegetable oil into a deep pot or deep fryer to a depth of about 1 to 2 inches. Bocadillos, Spanish sandwiches usually filled with ham, cheese, or other meats. 
Bocadillos are traditional Spanish sandwiches, typically made with a baguette or similar crusty bread and filled with a variety of ingredients. Here are a few popular bocadillo recipes. Ingredients Bread Baguette or similar crusty bread Fillings, examples Bocadillo de Jamon Serrano y Tomate Jamon Serrano, or Jamon Iberico Fresh tomatoes Olive oil Salt Bocadillo de Tortilla Española Spanish omelette, Tortilla Española, slices Aioli or mayonnaise Bocadillo de Aiton y Pimentos Tuna in olive oil Roasted red peppers Aioli or mayonnaise Bocadillo de chorizo Slices of chorizo Manchego cheese, optional Olive oil Bocadillo de calamaris Fried calamari rings Lemon wedges Aioli or mayonnaise Preparation Prepare the bread Slice the baguette or crusty bread in half lengthwise. Optionally, you can toast the bread lightly. Prepare the fillings. For bocadillo de jamon serrano y tomate. Grate or thinly slice the fresh tomatoes. Drizzle olive oil on the cut sides of the bread. Layer with slices of jamon serrano. Spread the grated tomato on top and sprinkle with a little salt. For bocadillo de tortilla española. Spread a thin layer of aioli or mayonnaise on the bread. Add slices of tortilla española. For bocadillo de aiton y pimentos. Mix the tuna with a bit of aioli or mayonnaise. Spread this mixture on the bread. Top with roasted red peppers. For bocadillo de chorizo. Drizzle olive oil on the bread. Add slices of chorizo and, if desired, manchego cheese. For bocadillo de calamaris. Spread a thin layer of aioli or mayonnaise on the bread. Add the fried calamari rings. Serve with a lemon wedge for squeezing over the top. Assemble and serve. Place the top half of the bread over the fillings. Press down gently to help the sandwich hold together. Serve immediately. Pinchos, small skewers of meat or seafood, often grilled and seasoned. Slice of tortilla española on top. Four pincho de gambas al agillo. Saute shrimp in garlic and olive oil until cooked. Place a shrimp on each bread slice. Garnish with a sprinkle of chopped parsley. Four pincho de queso y ancoa. Drizzle olive oil over the bread slices. Add a slice of manchego cheese. Top with an anchovy filet. Four pincho de chorizo y pimiento verde. Place a slice of chorizo on each bread slice. Top with a strip of grilled green pepper. Assemble and serve. Secure each topping with a toothpick or small skewer to hold everything in place. Arrange the pinchos on a serving platter. Calamaris, fried calamari rings, often served with lemon and aioli. Calamaris, or fried squid, is a popular Spanish dish often enjoyed as a tapa or appetizer. Here's a simple recipe to make delicious, crispy calamaris at home. Ingredients 1 pound, 450 grams, fresh squid, cleaned and cut into rings. 1 cup all-purpose flour. 1 teaspoon paprika. 1 teaspoon salt. 1 half teaspoon black pepper. Vegetable oil, for frying. Lemon wedges, for serving. Preparation Prepare the squid. Clean the squid if not already cleaned. Rinse the squid rings and tentacles under cold water and pat them dry with paper towels. Prepare the coating. In a large bowl, combine the flour, paprika, salt, and black pepper. Mix well. Coat the squid. Toss the squid rings and tentacles in the flour mixture until they are well coated. Shake off any excess flour. Heat the oil. Pour vegetable oil into a deep skillet or frying pan, to a depth of about 1 to 2 inches. Heat the oil to 375 degrees Fahrenheit 190 degrees Celsius. You can test the temperature by dropping a small piece of bread into the oil, it should sizzle and turn golden brown within a minute. Fry the squid. 
fry the squid in batches to avoid overcrowding the pan. Carefully place a handful of squid rings and tentacles into the hot oil. Fry for about 2 to 3 minutes, or until golden brown and crispy. Use a slotted spoon to remove the squid from the oil and transfer them to a paper towel lined plate to drain excess oil. Serve. Serve the calamaris immediately with lemon wedges on the side for squeezing over the top.